All right, we are live. Hello and welcome, everybody. It is Thursday night, so it is time once again for the Tank Show, where we try and spend some time acquiring new knowledge. I am your host, Fish Room Fever, and I do have with me my buddy, pal, and co-host, Chad Nug Ed. Ed, thank you for being here. It's always good to talk to you and have you around, friend. It's always happy. Or ha always happy. Always good to be here. <laughs> Absolutely. So, um, first off, if you all would just give me an audio video check, Ed and I were working on some things before we got started, um, and the audio levels seem a little off to me, but if you all can hear everything fine, then we're golden. Um, it has been an interesting couple of weeks. We're going to talk fish. We're going to talk about some fish products. Um, we're also going to kind of talk about just the, the farm life and the other projects I have going on and because those do directly impact getting the fish projects done. Uh, I guess the first thing I want to say is if I seem a little off uh, tonight as opposed to a typical night, I try and stay on top of things and keep the ums and alls and pauses out. I am still a little uh, shaky from an incident that happened earlier, um, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, it, uh, I'll try and express it fairly. Uh, some of you all will be like myself and go, nah, you, you're fine, it's no big deal, especially if you've been through it. Um, some of you will probably be like my missus and my mom and be like, you almost died, and the doctor. Um, so... Uh, we'll discuss that, but fortunately, uh, Mrs. Fever to the rescue. Um, so we'll talk about that a little bit while John and Lisa are still rolling. That way we can get into the fish stuff and people start coming in from there. Uh, for anybody that doesn't know, which most of you are here a lot, um, so you probably do, I sleep in on schedule. I usually go to bed between 6 or 8 o'clock in the morning, get up early afternoon, uh, and that's how my day works. Um, sorry, uh, the, the breathing is still a little off too, but, but we'll be good. Uh, so I'm laying there this morning about six o'clock, I'm um, trying to go to sleep and I'm actually, you know, sitting there in my head working on this YouTube video that I'm going to be doing at Aquashella, uh, working out questions in the, the, the camera angles and the layout and all this good stuff. Um, I started getting itchy, uh, and, and I want to preface this with, I'm somebody that's never been allergic to anything. Uh, I've had, you know, no food allergies, no medical allergies, no nature allergies like pollen or, um, you know, grass or any of that type of stuff. I started getting itchy and it's just kind of everywhere. And I got up out of bed and went in the bathroom, turned on the light and started looking around. And I've, I've been stung by jellyfish many times before. And it looked like jellyfish welts from tips of my fingers to the top of my head to the bottoms of my feet um my chest was starting to get real tight throat was starting to get real tight and so i called um i halfway attempted to wake up the missus i was like do we have any benadryl because anybody that knows me like from the piranha bite knows i tend to underemphasize things and kind of stay calm under pressure so like when i got bit by the piranha my response was hey babe can you bring me a band-aid i got bit uh, so I was like, hey do we <laughs> have any benadryl <laughs> it's just like she I, I couldn't find it. Blood? Oh yeah, she she freaked out when she saw the blood on the piranha bite. But <laughs> she said no, so I let her go back to sleep. I called my mom, um, who's just down the the hill from me. She lives on the property also, and um, asked her if she knew my insurance information because she's real good with that stuff. So she goes through like all the plans every year and finds me the best insurance. I couldn't find my card because I was just going to drive to urgent care. And about that time, I started to get real dizzy and couldn't really breathe. And in going with what John was talking about with his zombie fish in the chat, you know, at KG Tropicals, we were talking about finding fish on the floor, gasping and all that stuff. Um, I went in the room and I told her I was getting ready to drive to the hospital. And... I don't think I was was that bad off. Um, her and my mom have both said you were laying in the floor, trying to gasp for air, and your lips were blue. It was not okay. Um, so I kind of got the, I got to know what that fish felt like that jumps out of the tank, you know. Uh, but I got fortunately she, well, I say fortunately, it's unfortunate that she has severe allergies. But fortunately, because she does, she has epipens. Uh, so the missus grabbed an EpiPen, 
popped me with that and brought me back out of it and rushed me to the ER. And they gave me some more shots and some medicine. And uh, then I came home and slept most of the day. So still a little light on the breathing and a little shaky, but I'm, I'm fine. I'm doing good. Um, but yeah, I had that, that fish out of water uh, sensation this morning. So that was, was interesting. And apparently I'm allergic to something, which we have no clue. I've narrowed it down to maybe two things, um, which are, are very odd things. But, you know, we went through everything with the doctors step by step, went through everything with each other step by step. The only factors that are varied any anywhere are the, um, well, one, you know, I live out here in the country, 26 acres. I'm constantly getting bit by stuff. You know, it's a couple times a week I'm pulling the tick off uh, and they're usually the lone star ticks which can cause um ags which is a meat allergy a red meat allergy which i'm hoping it's not that um but that's a possibility so i've got to get to an allergist to find out what it was the only other thing i can think of is uh we do have 50 baby chicks approximately 50 it might be 49 baby chickens little, little baby chicks um that we're raising up right now and she had bought a different brand of food and I did hand feed, uh, I grabbed a handful, um, some of the bigger chicks and I, I tossed it down in there for them to peck and scratch at. Um, oh no, Dobby, not right now, sweetheart. The cat's trying to attack me. Um, but the thing is where I'm normally really good about food prep and washing hands and that kind of stuff. I was prepping this, this extra pin cause she kind of came home with some unauthorized chicks late that night. Um, after I fed them, I honestly, it was three o'clock in the morning. I was, I was worn out. It had been a long day. We'll talk about some of those fun projects, but I honestly don't remember if I washed my hands after throwing the chick food in before I dumped some Tums in my hand and popped those in my mouth uh, because it wasn't a, a local reaction. It was a systemic reaction. So it had to have been something, you know, that would have gone all through the body. So it's weird. Still trying to figure it out. Still being a little cautious because um, I don't know what the heck happened. That's how my day started. Um, and it's been almost like two weeks of, of fun, interesting crisis mode, things like that. So, hey, there's the chat almost trying to work. Oh, there we go. The chat is back. I just had a bunch of names. I'm going to roll it right back to there and pause it so that I can get to your questions and comments. Um, but I'm fine. I'm everything's good. Just a little, little worn out. Uh, <laughs> excuse me. So that's how life is here today. Uh, and in terms of the fish, we'll talk a little bit about those first. Um, the fish are doing really well. I've still got to, amongst the, the dozen other projects, I've got to get them a fish house built and get them moved. Um, but we're having a lot of stuff that is still breeding. Uh, the blue-eyed lemon plecos, the one male I've gotten there, he has a batch every single week. Uh, so that's awesome. Uh, I am absolutely loving. Some of you all know I've been trying out using these in a breeding setup, these colanders from the dollar store. Uh, I absolutely love it. I think this is going to be my new go-to. Once I get the full fish room set up, I'm going to have a bunch of 10 gallons with these in them and probably some 20s as well but these have just made life so easy to throw you know you look at it, once you've you know bred live bears particularly you get a a feel for when they get close to popping so i'll, I'll take a mom that's going to pop in the next day or so and i'll throw her in one of these sitting on the rim of a 10 gallon and then the babies just swim right out and it has done wonders i must have gotten 100 plus fry just out of one strain this week i usually throw one of these mesh crafting pieces over it just so they can jump out. That's pretty smart. Um, I need to get that craft mesh. I've got the strainer myself because I've got, I was going to do it for Danios to breed Danios, but uh, that's a great idea to breed guppies too. Oh yeah, absolutely. It'll work for those as well. You can do the Danios. Um, and a lot of other things. It works for not just the live bears, but uh, egg scatters as well. I'm going to try real quick. Oh, please, kitty, stop. This other ear pierce, because I can just barely out of this one.
you know what? I'm going to, hmm. I was going to see if I could hear myself on YouTube. Yeah. All right. I just tested. Well, I, I'm sounding not... loud on YouTube. So it's just our feed to each other. Yeah, it's, it's just our feed. So at least it's not affecting you all. Um, it is making it extremely hard for me to pick up what, what Ed is saying, but I'll just have to be really quiet. And you're probably seeing me like, what? I'll do this. Uh, yes. Every time I talk. <laughs> it's like, hey, <laughs> listen to me. All right. I'm going to grab some highlighted stuff from the chat real quick, um, and then we'll talk about some other projects and a couple other products as well that I want to share uh, that I've kind of transitioned over to that have made a difference in my fish keeping over the past month or so. From the chat, um, and I see you all some awesome people with the, uh, the gifted memberships, and I will get to you all with a special thank you shortly. I appreciate you very much. Uh, Ken's 3D and, and Aquatics says, hey, folks, finally have a day off tomorrow. Uh, Chattanooga, Ed, I have a package to send your way. Glad to see y'all. It's good to see you too, Ken. Awesome. Uh, and Ed, I will say, I'm sure you're going to enjoy that package. From Ken, he sent me one with some awesome stuff that he prints and sells in his Etsy shop. And it's good stuff. I enjoy it. I'm about to build my Down wall. Here. I'm going to be building a wall for my second fish room. So I'm just Give on the verge. Two seconds. I'm going to... I want to try a wired headset real quick. If you want to take over, sure. Ed, I know you had somebody you wanted to shout out uh, here in the Fish Fam and talk a little bit about their channel. So I'll be right back. Okay. Well, and you know what? I'm going to be really mean, and I'm just going to take the whole thing. Oh, young guy. I, I was trying to be smart. Ah. <laughs> Never mind. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I think James did that because I couldn't do it correctly. But uh, nevertheless, Roxanne Foxy's fish is so close to a thousand. She only needs 40 more people. And she is so awesome and positive. Uh, she owns a, a fish store with Peplin Creek and they sell amazing fish. They package amazingly good. I I would actually, okay, I think Dan is like the king of packing from Dan's Fish, get gills. They might have it on him because, I mean, they just pack it just perfect. It's amazing. It's like buying a package of gum when you get fish from them. But nevertheless, and then she goes on Thursday nights also at about, I oh gosh, I think she goes at seven before KG. And uh, she's going to be my special helper tonight on uh, Crafted. And actually, Crafted's going to be fish versus fish tonight. So uh, she's filling in for Rico tonight. But hopefully, we can get her to a 1,000 in the next two streams. That'd be so cool, guys. I don't know if anybody could uh, post her link. I'm probably a mod, but I don't know how to do it. But it'd be awesome, guys, because she's really good for the community and everything. And let's see, uh, I see James is there. You want to come up, James? I don't know if he's still working it out. Are you still working it out? I got it, buddy. For some Am reason, it's quiet. Uh, no, you're coming across well through the um, the microphone. Good deal. But uh oh, now I think he just uh, linked dead. Oh, there's Matt. He's a super mod, and he did it. Good job. Thanks, Matt. Um, Matt yeah. from Liquid Zoo. We're... Oh, you're back. There we go. Yeah, it is raining here as well, so that always impacts the uh, the Elon Musk satellite internet anytime it's, it's heavy rain. Uh, but I can hear you great now, um, so we'll just run it through the, the Yeti and go wired for tonight. That way the folks don't have to deal with the stuff. All right. Uh, I don't want to interrupt you, Ed, because I didn't necessarily catch where you were at and what you were discussing. But whenever you're done, let me know, and I'll go back to these highlighted questions and comments. Oh, I'm done. It's all right. I was just uh, pushing uh, Foxy's fish. And if anybody could sub to it, it'd be amazing. Matt, drop the link. And if you don't like her, just sub to her for me. And don't ring her bell. 
but you might find out that you love her and watch her all the time. She has some amazing Absolutely. shorts and she has some of these live streams where she has eggs that pop like break open. And so it's like axolotl ones and fish ones. I think she did a fish one too, but you get to see the eggs because she knows right before they pop in the egg tumbler and then the, you get to watch them. And it's really neat. She that sounds cool. awesome. Okay. So what else do you got going on in your fish room, James? Um, well, I've got a lot of stuff, but I'm going to grab some more highlighted things before I get too far behind in the chat. And then we'll talk more on projects and planning. Squibsky, maybe it's Squibsky. I apologize if I screwed that up, which apparently I did because I said two. Uh, is this fish room fever probably the weirdest question you'll get? Uh, you'd be surprised, but maybe. I have a fancy Goldie that can't handle regular cold water temperatures for other Goldies. Could it possibly be a betta? So, I will say this. Um, I'm just going to call you Squib. Squib, I don't know your personal level of fish expertise, so to say, uh, in terms of identifying fish. Uh, so, I'll put it this way. I have been in even fish stores. Um, not even, we're not going to include just general hobbyists, random YouTube videos, where I've seen things incorrectly identified. But I've, I've seen enough fish misidentified in fish stores um, to know that that definitely can happen. Um, there's, I would think, then it's just opinion. This is, you know, totally subjective. I feel like the body styles, colorage, finage, generally speaking, between... Um, even fancy goldies and bettas is a fairly significant dif difference. But again, that may just be my eye of having seen a lot of types of different fish over years and years and years. Uh, so is it possible? Yeah, absolutely. I've seen plenty of people that send me a picture go, hey, I picked up this fish on Craigslist and this person said it was this, but I don't think it's this. What do you think it is? And I'm like, yeah, that's not what they told you it was. Uh, so it's definitely possible. What I would do is I would find a forum or like if you're a member of um, quite a few channels, my channel, the KG Tropicals channel, one of the, the places that has a discord uh, involved with it, um, get on there where you can post pictures. That's what I'm getting to find some place. You can share some photos or maybe a Facebook group that you're a part of find some pictures where you can share some photos with some other people uh, because that's going to be the best way to identify it. Um, even if you kind of described it in the chat to me, I probably would go, and it might be a better, uh, but if you post some photos, people are going to be able to at some point look and go, yeah, that, this is definitely what this fish is, or it's highly probable that this is what your fish is. So that's what I would do. It's definitely you know, a weird question. I give you that. It, if you could send a photo to Chattanooga Ed on Facebook, I'll share it on here, right? Like, as soon as you do it, I'll share it, and uh, we'll all give us our opinions. Because that would be hey, awesome. there you go. Thank you for that, Ed. I appreciate you doing that. Uh, Whips World saying hiya to James and Ed. Hey, Whip. Good to see you, buddy. Just to talk about misidentifying fish. Mm -hmm. I was at a PetSmart yesterday, and they had rainbow sharks as albino rainbow sharks, and they had rainbow sharks as redfin sharks. So, I mean, even the big guys mess it up. You know, they just didn't realize what an albino rainbow is and what an albino, you know, a normal rainbow is. Rainbow shark. So, just wanted to throw that out there. Yeah, absolutely. Michelle Crisco, good to see you. I appreciate you being here. Says, I had an allergic reaction. I walked in urgent care as they took me to the back and called EMS. My face was like a puffer fish. Allergies still a mystery. Two years later, glad you're okay. Thank you so much, Michelle. And I'm glad you're okay. Um, so, yeah, the world may never know, but I am going to get to an allergist and have them run some panels um, as well as test for AGS, which I hope it's not because I do enjoy my red meat. But it is a possibility oh, even the nurse. Horrible. Yeah, even the nurse said, have you been bitten by a tick lately? Because my brother got AGS. And I'm like, yeah, usually two or three times a week, unfortunately. But that's, you know, just part of living out in the country and dealing with nature. Enjoying nature, I should say. Uh, I don't deal with nature. I enjoy it. 
if this is something that's happening more and more, I think our government needs to start changing whatever they're thinking about and focusing on murdering ticks. There you go. I All know right, we're not supposed to kid. talk about political stuff, but ticks really suck. Yeah, literally. And in other ways, <laughs> uh, Killer Kitty 08 says, what tip should we aim for at night before we put fish in the pond? So that is going to, again, this is probably going to sound like a non-answer, but that's going to vary a lot depending upon what the fish is. Um, if you've got white cloud mountain minnows, they're going to have a much lower temperature threshold than like when I put my guppies and inlers out or I put, you know, bristle noses out into a, a pond or a tub. I'm going to include tubs as well in this. Uh, the pond you can typically get away with because it's a larger volume of water, uh, lower nighttime temps, uh, as long as you're getting some fairly decent daytime temps. So if that water is having a chance to really warm up during the day and get that body of water to a solid temperature, of course, the more water you have, the longer it takes for that temp to drop at night. Um, so again, a non-answer, but those are the things I would take into account. I, I personally, even here, you know, today it was, it, I think it's 72 or 73 outside. That's what my phone said. Um, Cause I get the little temperature notifications. Probably look at that. Let's see. Um, but yesterday, the day before yesterday, it was like 55 degrees at three o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. I already cleared Ooh. that notification, but it was, it was low seventies. So uh, the, the joys of East Tennessee, if you don't like the weather, wait 15 minutes, it'll probably change. Uh, I tend to, because of where I'm at and because of the specific fish that I would like to have outside, I usually won't have anything going out until May uh, because my um, one of my sons, his birthday is the 24th. He just had a birthday, uh, 24th of April. And we've had years where, you know, one year we had frost. It was so cold. You know, we're like, hey, we play in this big thing at the park and then there's frost. And then the next year it's like, hey, it's 70 degrees. So it's really hard in my specific climate uh, with fish that I don't want going, you know, into the 60s uh, and also me doing more totes and things like that, not necessarily large ponds. Um, I tend to err on the side of caution and wait a little bit longer before things go out. Only things I've got outside in totes and, and tubs and stuff right now uh, are some plants because plants actually not only will tolerate, but sometimes enjoy the cooler temperatures. Uh, and then a bunch of tadpoles. Like we've probably rescued 500 tadpoles from the mud puddles over the past couple of weeks as the mud puddles were drying up. Ed, do you want to add to that? Because you you do ponds and totes and tubs and all that stuff. Oh, uh, what was the original question? I I've been the original up my question tubs right now. Absolutely yeah. was. What temp should we aim for at night before we put fish in a pond? Oh. Okay, that's a great one. Um, now, like I just said, I've I've set up three tubs already, and I've got two more, maybe four more to go. I'm not going to put my fish out until mid-May because I don't want in the smaller tubs are going to get cooler than the bigger tubs, obviously. But I'm looking for temperatures during the day to hit 75 to 80, so that way my water is not going to get below 65. Because if it's going to get below 65, a lot of your fish are going to start dying or getting sick, like our tropical fish, like guppies and whatnot. If you have uh, rice fish, they'll be fine. Goldfish will be fine. Minnows will be fine. So it kind of depends on what you're putting out there. If you're putting, you can put betas out there, but you want it to be warm. So I'd put them out in June because you want it up higher. So it's like, but yeah, it really depends on what fish they're doing. Absolutely. And I've got a redirect here from Squib. Uh, maybe I just misinterpreted or I misread. Who knows? Again, a little, little off tonight. I am. Uh, it says, I meant add a beta to the tank. The Goldie can only handle high temperatures. I was wondering if a beta um, to be a tank mate for him. So, hmm. theoretically, yes. Um I will say I am one of those people that has done a lot of crazy mixes over the years with things that should not go together, uh, particularly if you're a beginner. Uh, I would say that the more experience you personally have with fish, 
the higher likelihood of success, not necessarily that it works, but that you don't kill anything. Uh, because when you know how fish behave and you're used to seeing fish interact and how they act when they're stressed and things of that nature, uh, it makes it a real easy judgment call to go, nope, I'm going to pull that fish out because this is turning out to be a bad idea. Um, but what I would recommend is if you're going to try it, do it when you're going to be available to watch the tank. Uh, so don't do it. Don't wake up in the morning, put them together and then go to work. That's about one of the worst things you could do or, you know, right before you go to bed at night. Do it when you have time to enjoy your tank, watch what the fish are doing, how they're behaving and interacting. Uh, depending upon the goldfish you have and the size that it gets to, it could potentially become an issue if that goldfish's mouth gets large enough and it decides it wants to start trying to, you know, suck on that bed or gnaw on some fins or things like that. Could be an issue. Uh, but a lot of times, you know, we worry about our bettas, especially the larger finnage ones, uh, being a little slow and things coming after them. Uh, fancy goldfish, that tends to be something you see a lot. A lot of fancy goldfish move kind of slow and are almost derpy sometimes. Uh, so it may work out well in the fact that if that goldfish isn't quick and it's not aggressive, your bed is not having to constantly try and get away from it, it could be an awesome little setup. Um, and I'd love to hear about if you do it, how it works out. Because I'm always wanting to add to the library of things that, like, I do know this one person that did this successfully, um, but here's what I would uh, recommend first. So yeah, I would say, my opinion, uh, I'd give it a shot, but make sure you can observe in case things do start to go bad. Um, and then also to con continue to observe over time, you know, look for any nipped fins or any damage to the fish, anything like that. Because um, you never know, it could go the opposite way. Even though that betta has got a tiny mouth, that betta may decide it sees this big, round derpy goldfish with these big beautiful flowing fins just kind of wiggling real slow through the water and may decide it wants to go mess with it so you could have the the reverse problem with the beta being the aggressor um, but i think it's and worth it, giving it a shot as long as you've got them in that temperature range which you're saying goldfish is up is only handling high temperatures well go for it see how it works and let us know and if it starts to not look bad make sure you have or it starts to not look good Make sure you still maintain a place for that better to go to, you know, outside of that golden tank. In the 80s, I used to raise goldfish as a little boy and I'd grow them out real big and then, well, not like that big, but, you know, like softballs. And then I'd sell them back to the fish stores and I would get them when they were just about nickel size. And I used to buy, buy, I would get normally two uh, moors and two fantail gold, you know, whatever. and. Uh, I would, so I'd have four at a time that I would raise out in a 20 gallon with my betta. And the betta lived in there year round. And I would keep them in there till they got about the size of a silver dollar before I'd put them in the pond to go with the bigger goldfish. Cause I want to make sure the gold, the other goldfish just wouldn't swallow them up or something. So I would, I'd grow them out pretty big in the hot, the warmer water grows out those goldfish quicker too. So, but I never had a problem with it. But I was always, it was always fantail, you know, slow goldfish. I think goldfish go like two and a half miles per hour. So. There you go. Uh, Liquid Zoo, only fins. Awesome moderator that he is. Thank you so much. Reminding everybody, um, I'm breaching for my microphone like I'm playing Xbox. And it's up here because I'm using my. my... If, if you want to have a higher chance, which I think the chance is 100% that I read it. Uh, of getting your question or comment read live, put that at symbol in Fish Room Fever in there somewhere. Highlights on my screen makes it real easy to pull out of all the other talk because let's be honest, we have a lot of awesome fish keepers here that do a lot of talking between themselves. And that's part of what we are here for. So everybody can get together, hang out, and not just listen to what us goofy guys have to say, but also interact with each other. So I love that very much. Grab this one here real quick. Leslie Perry said, I've never been so confused about when to feed my goldfish in their 180-gallon pond. Uh, they made it through a harsh winter. Now they're hungry. Been feeding them two times weekly. So that is one of those things that, uh, and as you go through more seasonal changes, uh, not that you don't know what you're doing, Leslie, but, you know, again, the more experience we get, the better we tend to get at things. Uh, it'll it'll become a pattern of recognition for you. It's like, oh, this is what the temps are now. This is what my feeding schedule in the past X amount of years or seasons 
uh, has adjusted to. Um, so this is what I'm going to adjust to. Then you also get to factor in things like, well, they're this much bigger this year than they were last year. So maybe I need to feed this extra amount. Uh, but it definitely can be interesting trying to adapt feeding habits and schedules to changing environments, whether that involves uh, externals like nature or internals like changing fish around, fish growing, fish breeding, so the population expands. Uh, or even, you know, in worst case scenarios, you have like a mass die off, you, just, you know, and a sickness hits your tank. You lose a lot of fish and then you need to adjust because you're not, you don't want to be feeding as many fish as you were. But Leslie, always good to see you. I hope you're doing well. I have fun interacting with you in the, the comments as well as other people's live stream chats too. So thank you for being here. Thanks for being a member as well. I think, all right, I've got two more I'm going to grab real quick that are highlighted. And then we're going to jump over to some super chats and gifted memberships and say a huge thank you to those people, because those are, after all, technically the sponsors of our show. They're the financial people that make this happen. Squib there says the Goldie is a chunky Ryukin. Uh, I have a mono and wood shrimp in the tank with it. And no problems. So, yeah, I would say probably going to be good with the beta. The one thing you might find. Um, it's possible, uh, but not necessarily probable, is that Beta may initially find an interest in those shrimp. So I would look out for that behavior as well when you do add that Beta into that environment. And Leslie said, this is my 10 feeder fish uh, comets, so comet goldfish. But very cool. Uh, I do enjoy seeing those would... in pond situations. All well, right, let's daily. jump over to my other After screen here. And... Load up these. Don't be mean to me, YouTube. And I do want to mention before we even got started, still haven't bought a new mouse. For those of you that know my mouse doesn't like to scroll, I have to click drag. Uh, Carol Cox, before we even got started using her membership milestone super chat, been a member for 26 months. Thank you so much. It's good to see you this stream again. It's good to be here. Um, like I said, I'm. I don't feel it was quite as much of a big deal as family and the doctor did. Uh, but again, I also tend to not panic when things go crazy. Um, but it is kind of. I do have that feeling. It's it's just good to be alive. You know that that could have been a lot worse. Had had nobody been here um, to wake up, or had she not had an epipen? We live out in the sticks. You know, out in the country on twenty six acres. There's not exactly a hospital five minutes away. Uh, so, you know, it's, I'm glad everything turned out okay in that aspect. It's great to be here and I'm enjoying talking to you all tonight. Just call me Eduardo, good old master aquatics there, gifted five fish room feeder memberships. A huge thank you to you, Eduardo, um, and welcome to all the people who receive those memberships. There is a bunch of behind the scenes stuff you can go and look at for free now, uh, because you were gifted memberships by Eduardo. So I encourage you to check some of that stuff out. Uh, it's a lot of the... Includes a lot of maybe the more day-to-day -day type of stuff or things that I don't feel would go well into an edited video, so to speak, uh, for the the super fans, I guess is a good way to put it. Huge thanks, Master. What's this? Sorry, I just got this pop-up that covered everything. It was like, what audio system do you want to use? The one I'm using. Go away. Um, but I forgot here. Shame on me. Shame on me. Shaking my head here. Is that not working? It's not working on my screen. Maybe these are working here. We do a happy dance for Carol Cox. Oh, that's just really, really, really delayed. Happy dance for Carol Cox there. And we'll give Master Aquatics this other. We're going to raise the roof a little bit. Thank you so much. Eduardo, also a member too. So thank you for that. Leslie Perry. Awesome, Leslie Perry. Gifted five fish room fever memberships as well. So a huge thank you to you, Leslie. Put your little wink there if it pops up. And uh, again, welcome to those of you all that are now part of the fish room fever family and have. Whoops. I think uh, James maybe froze up. Well, while James is froze up, I just want to go back while. to that. So that's fun. Oh. Um, <laughs> moving and packing and storing and all that good stuff. Um, but I've got to move the satellite to where I'll be able to hook up to it down there on the other side of the other side of the property. 
Lady Diane with a $10 super chat. Thank you so much, Lady Diane. Appreciate you being here. Always good to see you. I said, give this to James, LOL. Thank you. YouTube will give me most of it. So I do very much appreciate that. And we put that towards the uh, the stream yard bills and things like that to keep the system, system, the show rolling. Drink Water, been a member for 19 months. Thank you so much. Drink Water, using that membership milestone. Super Chat says, I hear that PetSmart is on its way out of business. Interesting. Ooh. I Now, let me preface this with, I don't keep up on a lot of what's going on in the world a lot of times. I stick to what I have to get done in my life and the 473 projects I've got going and how the family is doing. Um, so understand that when I say I hadn't heard anything about it, but I tend not to hear anything about things until somebody's like, hey, did you know? And I'm like, no, I didn't. I need to check that out. So thank you for passing that information on. I do definitely need to look into that. If they are, then I think it's safe to say they'll probably have some out going out of business type sales going on maybe. And that would be something good to get in on. Yeah, and it, it would help our local oh, fish stores, hopefully. For the information there. Appreciate it. Drink water, and thank you for being a member as well. Then we got Gillard Kitty 08 with the $5 super sticker with that cute little fox doing the little number one painting there, holding up the sign. Gillard Kitty, you are number one. I appreciate you very, appreciate you very much, uh, and also thank you for being a member. I know you've been a member for a while now as well. See which one of these is going to work. Click this one. Hey, that one worked. Well, happy dance. All right. Now it won't go away. All right. There we go. That being said, let's dive back over here. Make sure I haven't missed too many highlighted questions or comments there. All right. Good. Looks like I'm mostly caught up. I see maybe one or two more. Uh, so let's talk projects just for a couple minutes. Uh, just to let you all know what's going on with the fish bill. Like, Ed, you're asking, well, what, what's going on? Uh, over the past two weeks, my you know, 26 acres with a whole bunch of fish tanks and a bunch of family. Uh, but like I mentioned, we are moving, uh, I, I'm moving out of this trailer because even though I own the land outright, um, somebody else owned the trailer and they're ridiculous on their asking price so we're just not going to do it so we're going to just make it move it off my land uh so i've had to hook up an rv so which meant running power water septic all that stuff still working on the septic but it's got a, a holding tank at least so that's plus uh, but i did had have to do the wiring for you know 30 amp breaker for that and get water run and then i also had a 45 foot rv that i had to get set up for other purposes you know run wiring power water you know 50 amp breaker all that stuff and then get them cleaned up and inspected and run through all the, the processes of making sure that these things function. And, you know, the propane setup's not going to blow up when I turn on the, the hot water heater and that type of stuff. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, currently we have about 50 baby chickens. So I'm in the process of designing and building coops for all of those as they get bigger and they can go outside where they need to go. Uh, so that's been fun. Um, the general packing and downsizing of moving from a three bedroom home into a 35 foot RV. That's an interesting process. Uh, so we're doing that. And then I've got other projects. I had to build a tire wall with 350 tires in it the other day for, for some purposes we won't go into. Um, and I've had a close relative that's been having a family crisis that I've been having to do some help with them and spend a lot of time getting them through a situation and putting in some work to get things where they needed to be in their lives. Uh, and then there's the fish house, which is, it just keeps getting kind of, what exactly am I going to do? And I think I've come up with the idea of what I'm going to do right now, because I downsized when I moved here. I've got two dozen tanks as opposed to almost a hundred set up. All the other tanks are still in the storage, in one of the storage buildings. They're not going anywhere. They're coming back in the, the final fish build. The plan right now, is to build either an eight by eight, which is small, or an eight by twelve um, fish room because I can throw that up in a couple days. Like I can get, you know, the flooring, walls, everything done, wiring, insulation. I can do all that in a couple days. That's that's not hard. Um, right now, it's finding the time to drive an hour and thirty minutes, pick up the supplies, drive an hour and thirty minutes back, and get to work on these things. 
I need about three truckloads worth of supplies between the fish build and the chicken coop and some of the other projects I have to do around here to build things. Um, but the way that I am building it, once I get everything settled down a little bit, um, or at least have enough hours in the day, which is always nice, the way that I'm designing it is I will be able to go in, take the back wall out, and then expand it. So if I, uh, I'm planning to build it, um, I'm really thinking just doing 12, um, which is easy because anybody that does building stuff does a lot of stuff. Four foot sections, super easy to deal with. Uh, but I'm going to build it so I can just go in, unscrew the back wall, pull it off, and then I can extend it out. So I'll have a 12 foot wide by, you know, eventually 24, whatever I decide to expand it out to, whatever I look at and go, this is the footprint I need for the final fish build. Um, I don't know that I'm going to do room for any of the 275 gallon totes in there um that i think is going to be another building project separate down the road um but that is still a goal uh but that is what i'm looking at now is throwing up a small fish room but designing and building it so that when the time comes and i have time to be able to do it i drop the back wall off i just expand it outwards and then i can just go and go and go and my heart's content so that's what we're looking at now. Uh, it sounds like a lot, but it's really not. Uh, I've done all of that stuff in the past, the building, foundation, wiring, plumbing. Uh, so I don't, I'm not really concerned about it. Again, I think the biggest thing is I have nine to 12 hours of cumulative drive time just to go get all the supplies I need for the projects I've got to do. Because one one trip's just going to be a truck full of plywood. Uh, one trip's just going to be a truck full of two by fours. Uh, I've got to, you know, get a couple rolls of fencing for uh, the chicken runs and coops and all that stuff. And so it's it's been interesting. It's fun. I love it, though. Uh, I get to enjoy nature daily. So that is always a plus. Um, and I, I guess there you go. There's my, my daily uh thought is is to make sure that you time with the ones you love doing the things you love so even with all this going on we still find find time to hey we're going to go out here and do a tadpole rescue you know uh or we're going to go out and do this thing out in nature or you know we're going to spend time sitting here talking about the fish and you know what what my son wants to do with them and which fish he likes and uh his his plans for fish keeping as he's getting or he'll be 10 in a couple months so just Enjoy the ones you love doing something you love every day for a little bit, even if you can only grab five minutes away. I'm going to take a chance to breathe right now. Go ahead, Ed. Yeah. Well, okay. I've got a few thoughts. First one, I want to go back. So way back when we were talking about how many times to feed those goldfish, I would probably do it daily for a while since they've been like cooped up and now they're all energized, but you can, you don't have to give them just pellets. I was like looking at what is in pellets and it's a lot of proteins. You could throw them like peas and not a so many peas that it's going to throw your pH off, but you could get frozen peas and just take, you know, a small handful and throw the frozen peas out there every day for two weeks and, or you know, not every day, but every other day just to give them some extra, food to eat to get all excited about until like you're going to get your bugs and your plants and everything else grown in that pond that they can nibble on. But that was, that was for that. But this is for you, James. I was thinking the number one thing that I did to stop my ticks in Missouri was I bought Guinea hens and you can buy them. Like they're a squad, they'll like be a squad of Guinea hens. They're like a, like a platoon because they like to stay together and, They'll like take out any ticks that they find and they just do a huge number of populate. You know, they really destroy the, the population of ticks. Now, what happened when I got my guinea hens, I got a bobcat that started living on my property the next year. So he ate half my guinea hens and then I gave the rest to my my sister because she had a, a chicken coop for them. That was all protected and everything for them to you know, wired off. So the bobcat couldn't get in. So that's just something. I don't know if you'd, have you ever thought about guineas? 
Oh, you're muted. Oh, he can't hear anything right now. Oh, we lost James for a second. Well, I love guinea hens. They're amazing. Turkeys also do a big number on, uh, oh, we lost James altogether. I think he's going to come all the way back. The turkeys do a number on ticks also. It's just they get so big and the guineas are easier to control because they all stick together. But, uh, yep. Oh, gr oh, I bet his, I bet his earphones uh, ran out of juice there, Grant. But uh, another thing that James and I are going to be doing, and I was thinking, well, I, won't, I really don't want to say it without James here, but maybe if he wants me to, I could drive up in my truck and help him with some of his lumber and stuff, because that sounded really cool. I want to ask James about how is uh, the trailer that the jerk face guy that wants way too much for the trailer is going to, when he takes it or, you know, how that works, if the, he's got a concrete uh floor already maybe built there and then maybe he's already planning to build his fish house in you know in 12 foot sections would be really cool and if i can help him with lumber or something i, I that'd be a lot of fun to do but uh we're one thing that james and i were going to talk about is we're also going to be going to aquashella here in three weeks it's hard to believe that dallas is that close and we we're going to talk about like different things that we do uh, before. And oh, are you back? I am back. Um, I just had to go and reset everything on StreamYard. I know, Ed, you had mentioned uh, some other streamers said that StreamYard has been having some audio issues. So I guess that's what it was because it just, uh, my audio checks were coming through fine. I can hear myself in the mic and I could hear everything else I played, or I could hear myself from the mic, but I could hear everything else I played. Coming through, but I could not hear you. One word. So my apologies, everybody. Crazy. The joys of technology. Well, there's a, a program called Ninja that I heard about that we may want to try instead of uh, StreamYard. Absolutely. And it's hey, if it does be... 1080p and doesn't cost me 50 bucks a month to stream on it, and it works well, I'm all for it. I, I think it's kind of like a newer... StreamYard, so it has more bells and whistles. So Absolutely. I'll find out more about that for us. So Nate's got a question here. Nate says, James and Ed have been throwing the idea around about becoming one of the Fish Fam content creators and creating my own channel to share and grow the community. Any advice on starting out? Uh, make sure that it's something that you really want to do uh, and that you're going to be passionate about. Uh, it, if not, it doesn't give it a try and decide, hey, this isn't for me. Uh, I won't go too deep into just a streaming specific advice right now. Um, what I would encourage you to do, um, and I'm going to mention this specifically because I talk about the, the fish fam stuff um, and streaming in our little niche. Uh, if you go back several years ago on my channel, I used to talk about this stuff a lot more often because there weren't really a lot of, there were a couple of big names streaming, but there weren't really a lot of smaller, including myself, I'm a small channel, smaller channels, doing it. So we used to have a lot of live discussions about it. Um, if nothing else, go check out um, some other channels that talk specifically about starting a YouTube channel. Uh, but I know that I've in the past specifically discussed some of the things that I shared and what helped me and what I've noticed. Uh, and if you ever wanted to Nate, message me on Facebook, Fish Room Fever, um, I'd be happy to talk with you on their one-on-one uh, -on -one that way we're not uh, holding all the people up that don't want to hear about streaming because I do love talking about it, but that's, let's be honest. Most people here don't want to hear on it. Yep. Um, they want to talk about fish. Uh, let's see. Bates and genetics. I saw something. It wasn't highlighted. There it is. Uh, it will heavily help the mom and pop shops in the short term. If big shops like PetSmart and Petco close, but I foresee less people experimenting with the hobby for fun and the influx of people would dwindle. I think just in premise, going off of that without analyzing deeper, I completely agree with you, Bateson. Um, that sounds like an accurate assessment uh, and probably what would happen. Robert Johnston says, Fish Room Fever, how quickly should you get through a pack of fish food after opening uh, before it goes bad? Mine still smells fine, but I wonder what nutrients are lost. So um, I will give you two, two schools of thought 
Um, and though I agree with the first one, I don't always adhere to it. Um, you will hear, uh, I'm going to use a specific example, Corey from Grant Co-op. He tries to go through his fairly quick. I think his is like after a month, he starts to kind of wonder about nutrient loss and things like that. Uh, because you are, in fact, you know, every time you open that jar up, whether that's twice a week or twice a day, you're exposing it to moisture, uh, and over time you are losing nutrients. So he tries to go as fresh as he possibly can, buying, you know, smaller packages if you have to and burning through them. Um, I, uh, an expiration date is almost always uh, a stop point for me unless I have something. Uh, like, say, I would feed expired fish food um, crushed up into the tubs that have the, I think, James, the snails and the tadpoles. Um, I wouldn't mind that. But usually if it hits the expiration date, I'm not feeding it to the fish. Uh, and I do agree with him 100% that the quicker you can feed it, the better. Uh, but I will go out several months on a can of fish food. Um, and that is partially why I have dwindled down some of the stuff that I'm using. Is because even though I feed two to four times a day in my fish room, I have so many different products that I've either purchased or have been sent to me um, or, you know, just came upon or friends like here, I'm not using this, you know, do you want it? Yeah, sure. I'll try it out. Uh, that I am really trying to narrow it down to where I can still buy in a size that's a little bit more financially viable, but not in such a quantity that it's sitting there for six months, eight months or whatever. Um, you know, if it's still in date, I'll, I'll, I'll use fish foods out to that time frame. Absolutely. But I do definitely think you're losing nutrients. Um, but I also know that I am offsetting some of that because I feed live foods as well every single day. You know, I've got live baby brine, I've got vinegar eels, I've got uh, micro worms, banana worms, and walter worms. So lots of different nematodes. Uh, Daphnia. So I, I supplement nutrition wise with a lot of live foods that are helping to offset that slight nutrition loss from food. But definitely the fresher you can do it, the better. Um, but I wouldn't panic. If it's in date, it smells fine. It's not getting you're not noticing moisture in it. That's a big thing. If you're noticing any moisture whatsoever or food kind of clumping together, I'd just toss it or use it for some other kind of experiment that you're not concerned about the freshness of it necessarily. Uh, maybe you got a worm farm or something going on, throw it in there for the earthworms. I don't know. Um, but that's, that's my thoughts on it. What about you, Ed? I will. I like to buy five pounds of the Omega one, ultra color for my guppies the five pounds takes me about six months to get through i also add about a pound of other ingredients to it because i like to add a, more protein it has a little less protein than i like but i like the minerals that are in it that helps fish and then i add a few other of my secret things so and then i it's about six pounds once i get it all added up and then i put it i break it down into ziploc bags and i do half pound ziploc bags and that's good for about a week. So then I can just feed my, my fish with that. And uh, I keep everything else. I have a mini freezer. I bought it at Lowe's. I think it was like $160. But like, well, I, this isn't the Omega-1, but the Omega-1 sells their biggest can that you can buy like at the pet store is I think 7.5 ounces for like 16 or $17. But I can buy five pounds for $90. So I'm getting so much more for my money that way. Uh, so, yeah. you know, that's what I do is I freeze it and it Absolutely. pays off the freezer instantly. And I get to keep all my frozen food because I do do frozen foods and live foods too. So, yeah. but I try to that, always give them a dry food before like the last feeding of the day. Absolutely. That is in fact a wonderful way to do that. And I've done that many times in the past myself. Um, if you're not at a level that you can commit to a freezer or you're not buying in those quantities, another thing you can do, uh, we've talked about the things I love from the dollar store, get the little dollar where Tupper, uh, the dollar store Tupperware containers um, and put smaller quantities in those that you're going to be opening every day. If you don't have to feed a lot, you can adjust the, the storage size you need to how much you're feeding, you know, within a couple days or a week, I guess. Uh, and then you're only having to open your big actual container once a week, you're refilling 
your small container that gets opened every day or four times a day or whatever it is. And that will help maintain the freshness of the bulk of it, uh, as well as that small amount that's getting exposed to oxygen and moisture daily or however often you're feeding. Oh, I also don't throw away my old stuff. I keep it for because like James was talking about how he has the live worms and things. You can feed that to the worms. Uh, if you want to do a worm farm with like even red wigglers and stuff, you can put that in the soil, you know, mm -hmm. so you can use that old expired stuff still. You don't have to throw it away. Absolutely. Yeah, I've got I've got a worm farm going. Um, I'm sorry things are taking so long. Life has been kind of kicking me in the butt lately, um, which has been interfering with fish stuff. But again, I'm, I'm blessed to have the things that I do have so I don't complain about it. Uh, but it has offset me being able to bring some things to you all uh, that I'm super excited about. They're still in the works. Um, you know, we're in spirulina farm as well. That's one of the things that's on the list that we're going to build out. We're going to be farming spirulina algae. So a lot of fun things to come as soon as we can get life out of the way a little bit. I'm going to grab a couple more things here that I see. Uh, and then it'll be time for Chattanooga Ed's show. Uh, I think we're doing a fish versus fish tonight. If I'm not mistaken, yeah. Ed. So those are always fun. I encourage you to go check that out. And we'll talk more about that in just a second. Killer Kitty 8 using that membership milestone super chat. Let's see now that I'm back in here if these things are working. Maybe this is what I broke. Hey, happy dance. All right, let's go. People. We'll do the happy dance there. They're working again. I've uh, been a member for 20 months. Thank you so much for all the love and support, Killer Kitty. It says, I love guineas. They make the best sounds. I guess uh, I saw a couple things in the chat. You were talking about guinea hens. Um, I don't know if we'll do guinea hens. Uh, I've had them in the past. Oh. Uh, I know my son is dead set on doing some quails. Every time we go to uh, Rural King, he's like, can we please get a couple of quails, Dad? I'm like, not That's right awesome. now. I have too many things to build to build anything for them. Um, and we can't really do free range because we've got six cats and six dogs on a property. And most of the dogs oh. I, like to have, I like to let them run loose. Uh, all but one of the cats... Uh, spends a lot of time outside running around catching rabbits and birds and all, things like that being cats you know doing cat things um and i know that uh my big boy german shepherd um would be after any of the the chickens or hens or anything like that what if you raised them with them like showed them the babies and let them because they might because German Shepherds are shepherd dogs, you know, where they protect they livestock. They are. However, um, we had an incident where um, one of my boys, which I won't call out on the stream, uh, left the door open to the room that we have all the chicks in. And he was able to get in there um, to a batch. And he didn't eat them, um, but he kind of squeaky toyed about 15 chickens. Like within a matter of, it was it was done, um, and so now he unfortunately he wants to get in there. Like he goes and checks the door constantly to see if he can get through to them. So oh, no. that's that's a shame because yeah. that's my baby, that's my eighty five pound cuddle dog that jumps in the bed with me. He's big, beautiful, black German Shepherd, and I love him. Um, and he's the most amazing guard dog and cuddle puppy at the same time. But now he's got a thing for chickens, unfortunately. Well, you see, that was when you couldn't hear me. I was suggesting you get guinea hens because they're like the number one tick eater. They love ticks and they just destroy oh, yeah. them. So yeah, we're um, we'll figure something out. But that's that's down the road. I've got to do some some right now projects and get things set up to a I don't want to say a minimalist level, but a, an acceptable quality level. And then down the road, I can look and go. You know, <coughs> we could set this this whole acre fenced off and do things here and that's the plan we're going to have uh not fish related a lot of farming projects we're going to be doing um some different flower farming uh, the missus is going to be doing her own soaps and things like that uh so we're a lot of stuff going on eventually it's going to be like one of those 20 project properties where you've got all these little businesses farm things you know gardens and stuff i'm building a greenhouse right now um, which fortunately it's one of those pre-packaged ones so that's a lot easier but that thing's halfway set up in the yard at the moment but another project real quick the garden of eater thank you so much for being a member using that membership miles doing super chat says ed you're going to enter the shrimp contest in dallas are you buddy you send some shrimp in for well, the contest do I, I need five that are identical well 
three that are identical and two boys. I might be able to do it. Do I have to sign? Do I sign up beforehand or how do I, how does that work? Darn it. We should do a, an episode where we just find out things like that. Yeah. How stuff works. I like it. <laughs> and have Grant come up and tell us. <laughs> but uh, absolutely. I, I could probably, oh, I actually have a whole lot of blues too. There's a, oh, a little baby one swimming right in front. So this has become my shrimp room. And uh, I I love this room. Oh, and Grant, I've been wanting to send you a text, but I'm going to ask you if you could bring like four or five packages of your food that I can buy and a hat to Aquachella. Because I need to buy that from you. I got to have a hat. Where to go? Two thumbs up for Grant. Thank you for being a member. And also, thank you for uh, letting me know in the chat that it was, in fact, my stuff that was not working with StreamYard. Appreciate that. And then I see Corey in here. Uh, he's a local guy that's been setting up a piranha tank. I've been talking with him, having some fun, watching him go through that process. He's got a beautiful 150-gallon planted piranha tank. Uh, he said, what about those who use an auto feeder? Any tips other than refilling it in smaller amounts? So I feel like, generally speaking, most of the auto feeders are sealed up well enough that they're going to maintain a decent level of freshness. Uh, so I, I think unless you are... Like specific example, let's say you're packing that thing full of extreme nano pellets and you have it set to only drop the smallest amount possible because you only have a couple of fish in there. I think in that instance, you could potentially run into an issue of this, the food going stale. Uh, but that's a very, you know, polar example of how most people are using them. I I feel like, generally speaking, that the way that most people are using them, the food is not going to go bad in that auto feeder before it gets fed out to the fish. So I think you're probably fine. Um, I don't know what your refill schedule is going to be. Um, and I say going to be because I know that you, you just got those piranhas today. Um, but I would probably, so if it's me, I'm setting something up. If I notice that I'm only refilling my auto feeder every two months, I'm going to start putting less food in there um, and take it down to a month. Examine how the food looks, you know, that's, that's in there over a month long period. Uh, because you do want to still integrate the design of simplicity and making life easier. That's why we have auto feeders. At the same time, you don't want to sacrifice too much of the freshness of the food. So that is my two cents on it. I think we got everything tonight, which is fantastic, given the, the issues that StreamYard was having. I appreciate you all being here. 75 people watching. Do me a huge, huge favor, if you would, please, if you've made it this far or if you're on that awesome replay crew, and you know I love you guys, hit that thumbs up. Um, let's see if between the live people here and the people that hit the replay, if we can get 100 likes. Anytime we can get 100 likes, that puts a huge smile on my face because not everybody does that. So that would be great. We're getting ready to head over to Chattanooga Edge channel. But before we do that, I don't, I'll drop and you talk. All right, go ahead, buddy. And then we've got the send over set up. So we'll do an automatic redirect. Head on over there, Ed, and I'll be with you in just a second. The last thing I want to do tonight is I want to share something with you all um, that a lot of you all will not be interested in. However, some of you will be. I know we've got some people that are into gaming, uh, and I have a buddy in Canada that I play with fairly regularly when I have the time. Um, tonight's not one of those nights, unfortunately. Uh, but he's he's dipping his toe in the YouTube water, and he's, he started uploading a couple little videos, and I'm going to be working with him to um, get him to where he's actually you know, posting videos and commentary and doing live streams, and you'll probably catch me on his live streams as well. But uh, I would appreciate it if you went and checked out his channel if you're into gaming. Um, and you can even see a couple of clips of me doing some Fortnite wonder, wonder works on there, doing some nice crown Royale wins. So there it is in the chat. Uh, he's an awesome guy. Uh, he works his butt off right now. He's doing, you know, I think four weeks straight of 12 hour days. So, 
Um, he, he's just a great guy, and I know it would probably bring tears to his eyes if he turned around and he had, you know, even 20 subscribers versus the four that he's at now. He, he It would mean the world to him. So I'm going to share that. Not out of fish-related stuff, but just out of love for a friend that's a good person. And I want to try and help out a little bit. That being said, we're going to head on over to... It's not crafted tonight. It's fish versus fish with Chattanooga Ed. I will be joining him momentarily. Got another person on the panel as well. I think two other people on the panel as well. You will have the option straight from this stream. If it doesn't redirect you automatically, you can click on the little button at the top of the chat that says people are going to watch Chattanooga Ed. Go now. It'll send you straight to there. You don't have to type anything else. A huge, huge thank you, of course, to Ed, who is headed to his uh, but to the uh, moderators, members, lurkers, listeners, super chatters, contributors, questioners, commentators, and of course, the replay crew. I love you guys. Till next time, keep your fish healthy. Keep yourselves healthy. Don't be afraid to catch yourself. Little fish room fever. Love you guys. We'll see you next week.